Hi guys, today we're going to review our astronomy unit. Let's start with why can we live on Earth? What makes Earth special? So we are in what we call the habitable zone. That means that we are the correct distance from the sun to allow for liquid water. If we were too close to the sun, we would have all of our water be in water vapor form and gas form because it's very hot closer to the sun. If we were too close, if we were too far from the sun, we would have all of our water be in solid form as as ice. Now, we also have what we call a terrestrial planet. That means we have a solid ground to walk around on. If we were on Neptune or Jupiter, those planets are made of just gases and we could not live on them plant plants, have animals, or build a house because it would just sink into the middle of the planet. Last but not least, we have an atmosphere that allows for the sunlight that hits the earth and reflects off to be kept inside and keep our planet warm. This means that when we are towards the sun and at night when we're turned away from the sun, our temperatures are pretty steady. Otherwise, it would be really hot during the day, and it would be freezing cold at night all of the time. The next unit that we had was called Tides and Eclipses. Tides are when you go to the beach, and you build that sandcastle on the beach, and a couple hours later you come back, and the tide has come up, the water level has come up, and wash your sandcastle away. This happens because of the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon. The sun and the moon has gravity that pulls on us, but we also pull on them. That's why we orbit the sun and the moon orbits us. This is the same location during high and low tide, just so you can see the difference. Now, gravity depends on a couple things. First of all, it depends on the size of the object. Secondly, it depends on the distance between the two objects. So the sun has gravity that keeps us orbiting, but its gravity is not the same, or the effects are not the same as the moon, which is closer to us, even though it is way, way smaller than the sun. This gravitational pull distorts our sea levels by pulling on the liquid water which flows more easily than our solid land. Now for the diagram below, this is hard to understand unless you imagine that this R right here is the North Pole and that we actually are living somewhere about right here. Now the Earth is spinning on its axis so that means that every 24 hours we experience low tide then high tide here, then low tide again, and then high tide here. That's because the water on the earth is like a bubble. And when we pull and stretch on that bubble, we're changing the shape of the bubble on both sides of the earth. So facing the moon, we have high tide. And straight away from the moon, we also have high tide. This means that the two points in between are low tide. Now please realize that high tide only happens for a couple of minutes and so does low tide and that every other minute in between the water is changing slightly between high and low. Now the sun does have gravity that pulls us into orbit and so we are pulling back on it as well and this helps with the tides. Now two times a month, the sun, the moon, and the earth all line up, and we have a special tide known as spring tide. Now because we have two objects that are pulling, their gravity is pulling in the same direction, high tide on those days is higher than normal. This happens at full moon and new moon. Now we also have neap tide, 
which is when the sun is pulling in the opposite direction than the moon. Neap tide is a weaker high tide. It doesn't come up as high that day as it normally would. Now your memory cues for this are spring tide is strong and they're in a straight line. Neap tide is weak and they're in a 90 degree angle. So in this diagram you can see that the two pictures on the left are spring tide and the two pictures on the right are neap tide. Eclipses. We have two types of eclipses. We have solar and lunar. When it's a solar eclipse, we cannot see the sun, and when it's a lunar eclipse, we cannot see the moon. Lunar eclipses happen when the moon's orbit allows it to pass into the shadow created by the earth. The sun is shining on the earth, but it also is absorbing that sunlight or reflecting some of it back into our atmosphere. But uh, when we are on at night and we are on the back side of the sun, we are technically in our own shadow. So when the moon passes into that shadow, we cannot see the moon. Loon solar eclipses is when the moon gets in front of the sun and makes a shadow on the earth. This shadow looks as though, from our perception, as the moon is blocking the sun. But please realize that this is a very small section on the earth that, ex that experiences this phenomena. Total solar eclipses only happen every 360 years in the exact same location. Lunar eclipses can happen two to three times a year. Partial eclipses are more common than total eclipses. That's because there does not have to be an exact perfect alignment. Now we've talked a lot about our moon, but we also know that our moon is our natural satellite. We keep it in or orbit because of our gravity pulling on it and its gravity pulling on us. There's a size difference of about 29 moons would fit inside the Earth. So the moon's actually a lot smaller than the Earth. We also can only see the near side of the moon because as the moon revolves around us, it spins on its own axis and it is perfectly matched with how much of the lit surface we can see. Because the moon is so much smaller, the moon only has one-sixth of the gravity that Earth does. That means if you were 100 pounds on Earth, you would only weigh 16.6 .6 pounds on the moon. The moon's orbit takes about 30 days. Technically, it's 29.5 days. Now, the moon does not produce its own light. Sunlight has to hit the moon, reflect off of the moon, and come back to the earth and to our eyes for us to see it. Just like for us to see the grass outside, light has to hit the grass and be reflected to our eyes. It doesn't produce its own light. Now because the moon does not have an atmosphere, this happens more easily than some of the other objects in space. Now, if you've ever paid attention, you will notice that the moon changes a little bit each night. And that's because as the moon orbits the Earth, the angle of the lit surface of the moon that we see becomes a little different. So as it moves around us, we see more of the lit surface each night until we reach full moon. And then we see less of the lit surface each night until we're back to new moon. The order that we should know is we start with new moon. After new moon is waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, and then we hit full moon. After we hit full moon, we are losing light each night, and that's called waning gibbous until we get to third quarter and waning crescent.
The four main shapes that you need to know are a full moon has a completely lit surface, a crescent has less than half a lit surface, a quarter moon is exactly half the lit surface, and a gibbous moon is more than half of the lit surface. So here's our moon phases. Now you need to realize that as we are moving from new moon to full moon, these three moons are called waxing. It's waxing on the light. And we say if the light's on the right, it's going to get bright as we go to the full moon. Then when the light is on the left, we are waning off the light. Seasons. We all know that we have four seasons, spring, summer, winter, and fall. This is due to the earth being tilted on an axis at 23.5 degrees. As the earth revolves around the sun, sometimes the northern hemisphere is pointed towards the sun and receives more direct sunlight, and sometimes we're pointed away from the sun, receiving less direct sunlight. This creates summer and winter. Now, during the spring and fall, the tilt of the earth does not change the amount of sunlight we are receiving. And in fact, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere are receiving equal amounts of sunlight. These four seasons also come with four important days that mark the beginning of each season. Summer and winter have the longest and shortest days, which are called the solstices. Winter solstice is December 21st, and the summer solstice is June 21st. Now, in the spring and the fall, we have a special day there called the equinoxes. Those days are when we have 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. That happens March 21st and September 21st. For us to explore space and learn more about space, we've been working on this for quite a while, since the 1950s. Russia actually launched the first satellite, which was called Sputnik, in 1957. The U.S. wasn't far behind, and we launched a satellite named Explorer 1 in 1958. This set off the moon race, which began in 1961, and we beat Russia to the moon successfully in 1969 when Neil Armstrong was the first human to walk on the moon. Since then, NASA has launched several probes and satellites for the purpose of retrieving information about other planets and to aid in communication. Cell phones use satellites to call people around the world. We also have satellite television and internet. Last but not least, we also have new space shuttles that we use that are reusable. Before we had a reusable space shuttle, they used to just crash land them in the ocean. Currently, NASA is working with several other countries on the International Space Station, which they have been working on since the 1990s. Each year, they add new sections and expand the space station. Soon, NASA hopes that we can get humans to Mars. Now, all of this is very tricky to get people into space because space is a vacuum. That means there are very cold temperatures, there's no oxygen to breathe, and there's no air pressure to keep us used to the gravity that we need for our lungs to breathe and our blood to circulate in our bodies. Alright guys, that's about all I got for you today. Thank you so much.